Hey guys, what's going on? Glove Save Gaming back here with another video. In today's video, we're going to see if the Boston Bruins are able to make the 2023-2024 Stanley Cup playoffs without longtime captain, longtime legend Patrice Bergeron, who announced his retirement for a few days ago from the National Hockey League. I mean, Bergeron's just a legend in this league. Even if you're not a fan of the Boston Bruins, I mean, it's pretty hard to dislike the guy. He had such a legendary career. He was a six-time Selkie winner. He won the Mark Messier Leadership Award in 2021, the King Clancy in 2013. He won the Stanley Cup in 2011, 2005 World Junior Gold Medal, Olympic Gold Medal in 2010 and 2014, a 2004 World Champion, a 2016 World Cup of Hockey Gold Medal, and he won a Spangler Cup Gold in 2012 when the NHL was in a lockout. Bergeron accomplished a lot in his career, but I mean, he was also a legend with the Boston Bruins. He spent his entire career there. He ranked second in playoff games played with 170, second in regular season game-winning goals with 81, tied for second in playoff points with 128, third in regular season goals with 427, third in regular season points with 1,040, third in regular season games played with 1,294, and third in playoff goals with 50. So, I mean, this guy's just had an absolute legendary career. The Boston Bruins are definitely going to miss him, and I feel like are going to take some sort of a step back this next season. But let's see if this team is able to make the playoffs. I mean, they were had a historic run last year with 65 wins. Is losing a first-line center, Patrice Bergeron, going to make them miss the playoffs this year so let's take a look at the lines going in to the 2023-2024 season you might be looking at some of these overalls and be like jesus pavel zach is not really an 88 overall well i had to sim the 2022-2023 season first to get to this point so i mean boston had a pretty good season and these guys jumped in overalls there's really nothing i can do about that so on the first line i got marshawn playing with zaka and posternock second line's debrus coil and jvr Third line is Trent Frederick, Morgan Geeky, and Mark McLaughlin. Fourth line is Jacob Lauko, Jesper Boquist, and Milan Lucic. So Trent Frederick is currently an RFA. I did sign him to a one-year deal at $1.5 million. On defense, we've got Hampus Lindholm playing with Charlie McAvoy. Brendan Carlo playing with Mac Rislick. Derek Forbort playing with Kevin Shattenkirk. Scratches, we got Ian Mitchell, Oscar Steen, and Jakob Zaboral. And then in net, we got Jeremy Swayman, who's grown to an 89 overall. Did sign him to a contract, a one-year deal at 3.75. Since he's going to arbitration, he's only able to get a one- to two-year deal. Then Linus Allmark, I mean, the guy won the Vesna last season. He's doing really well. Down on 87 overall, though, looks like Swayman will get the net for the most part. So we're going to sim up to the 30-game mark, the trade deadline, and then the rest of the season. Curious to see if the Bruins are able to make the playoffs this is a pretty tough Atlantic division with teams on the rise like Buffalo, Ottawa, Detroit. Boston's definitely taking a step back, losing not just Bergeron, but Bertuzzi as well, Taylor Hall, Dmitry Orlov as well. So let's see if this team's able to make the playoffs and we'll catch up with you midseason. All right, guys. So I actually have simmed up to the 32 game mark. Bruins have 36 points, 17, 13, and 2, sitting 8th in the NHL, so not too bad. 89 goals for, so that's definitely went down. Goals against 95, so we're currently minus 6 goal differential, even though we're the 8th best team in the NHL. Taking a look in the Atlantic Division, we are in 3rd right now. It's a pretty tight race, though. Ottawa's out of the playoffs, and they're only 2 points behind. And Montreal's only 6 points behind, and they're in 7th place in the division. They got a couple games in hand as well. So, I mean, Boston is definitely going to have to keep winning some games if they want to be able to make the playoffs. Not too bad of a start so far with losing a first-line center. So as of right now, David Pasternak is leading the team with scoring 35 points in 32 games. Marshawn's got 31, Coyle 28, DeBrus 22, same with Hampus Lindholm. JVR's got 19, Pavel Zaka's got 18, Frederick's got 16, Morgan Geeky's got 12, McAvoy's got 9, McLaughlin's got 8, Lucic has got 7, Forbort, Shattenkirk, and Grizzlick got 6, Lauko's got 4, Boquist has got two, and Brendan Carlo only has one point. In goaltending, I mean, Swayman's taken over the starter's role, but Allmark's got the better save percentage with a 9.27 in 12 games. Jeremy Swayman's 9.10 and two with a 9.10, 3.21 GAA. So, I mean, goaltending's been pretty good for the most part as well, kind of keeping up from the 2022-2023 season. Spencer Knight's currently leading the league in wins with a 
20 wins, 919 save percentage. That's got to be one of the better save percentages for starting goalies. But Peter Mrazek on Chicago's got a 924 as well. So, I mean, he's doing pretty well with the Hawks. Johnny Goudreau's leading the league in scoring with 45. Pretty tight race, though. McCarr's got 44, Batherson 43, Adam Fox 42, and then there's a little bit of a drop-off to 39 with Nathan McKinnon. All right, guys, so we are here at the trade deadline. Boston has picked it up since the 32-game mark. 30 games later, we have a record of 37-21-4, and 4, 210 goals, 494 against. So the goal differential has gotten a little bit better. Third in the NHL, though, so, I mean, this team's looking pretty good, even without a bona fide first-line center. We are second in our division, though, to the Florida Panthers. They got one more point than us, but we do have a game in hand as well, so there's a possibility we could pass them. It's a pretty tight division, though. If we start losing a bit, some teams could catch up on us. Ottawa, Toronto is not too far from behind. Tampa Bay, same amount of points as us. They just played two more games. And Buffalo's even out of the playoffs. They're only nine points behind with 20 games left. It's going to be pretty hard for them to catch up, but it's definitely possible. So point leaders for the Bruins, David Pasternak has taken off since the last time we looked at the stats. He only was only a couple points over a point per game last time, but now he's got 90 and 62 games. Looking like he's probably going to score 50 goals. Marchand's in second with 77. Coyle's got 58. DeBrusque, 47. JVR, 44. Hampus Lindholm, 43. Zaka's got 39. Geeky's got 31, Frederick 28, Glofflin 24, same with McAvoy, Lauko's got 19, Lucic has got 13, Forbort and Grizzlick have got 12, Carlos got 11, Boquist has got 10, and Shattenkirk has got 8. For goaltending, they've still been pretty solid. Jeremy Swayman's down to a 906 now, though. Lion Salmark's got a 924. Let's take a look at the entire league to compare. We'll see if Spencer Knight's still leading in wins. And it's Andre Vasilevsky now with 34 wins in 58 games. He's got a 900 save percentage. So leading save percentage in the league is Allmark, but he's not a starter. Huso looks like he's probably looking at the Vesna. 49 games played, 917 save percentage. If he can keep this up for the rest of the season. Pasternak's leading the league in scoring, though. 90 points is exactly what you need when you're losing a guy like Bergeron. You need someone else to take over. Goudreau's in second with 84. Matthews, 83. Fox, 82. McDavid, 79. Brad Marchand, 77. McKinnon, Point, Marner have got 76. And Stamkos has got 75. So at the trade deadline, I decided to not make any moves with the Bruins. I mean, third in the NHL, there's no point of really changing stuff up. Take you through some of the trades here. I'm not going to go through every one, but Ivan Barbashev going back to St. Louis is pretty surprising. Seattle's getting Mark Stahl. New Jersey's getting Braden McNabb. Colorado's getting Sean Monahan. Dylan DeMello's going to Carolina. Duclair's going to Calgary. Kalorn's going to Seattle. Carolina's getting Marcus Foligno. The Islanders are getting Jacob Vrana and Malcolm Subban. Barabanov's going to Florida. Bobrovsky's going to San Jose. Montembeau's going to Columbus. All right, guys, so the regular season is now complete, and as you can tell, Boston Bruins able to make the playoffs. Three-way tie for sixth in the NHL with the Leafs and the Dallas Stars, 99 points, 46 wins, 29 losses, 7 OT losses, 274 goals for, 261 goals against. So, I mean, got a plus 13 goal differential we ended up with. In the Atlantic Division, we ended up finishing a wild card spot, actually, with 99 points, 9 points up on the Buffalo Sabres. So, I mean, a little bit of a drop-off near the end of the season, but it was good the Bruins still ended up making the playoffs and getting into a wild card spot. In accordance to scoring, David Pasternak absolutely took off this year. 53 goals, 61 assists for 114 points. Brad Marchand also hit the 100-point mark, ended up with 102. He had 33 goals and 102 points. I mean, Charlie Coyle had a really solid season at center. 30 goals, 42 assists for 72 points. He's an 87 overall. Super solid from him. Just going to scroll through the rest of the Boston Bruins list. We had some pretty solid point production for most of our guys. Guys at the bottom are mostly defensive style guys not guys that i would think would get a lot of points maybe kevin shattenkirk's a guy i would expect a little bit more from offensively but a pretty decent all-around season from the boston bruins swayman finishes with 30 wins in a 905 allmark finishes with 16 wins in a 920 so let's go take a look at the rest of the nhl to compare to some of our goaltenders vasilevsky Gets the most wins with 42. Knights got 39. Same thing with Philip Grubauer. Save percentages. Allmark finished second. 
Ingram was the best backup goalie save percentage. Looks like Vili Husso might be looking at the Vesna with a 9-12. That's pretty impressive. Saros, 9-10. But I think Husso with 31 wins might be looking at that Vesna trophy for the Detroit Red Wings. For all skaters, it's David Pasternak. Finishes with 114 points, so he could be looking at a Hart Trophy this year. Connor McDavid gets 108. Matthews and Adam Fox, 107. Ovechkin, 103. Dreisaitl and Marshawn, 102. McKinnon, 101. Braden Points got 99. Same thing with Johnny Goudreau. Quinn Hughes, 98. And Max Pacioretty with the Washington Capitals ends up with 96. All right, guys, so the playoffs are now complete, and as you can tell, we beat the Carolina Hurricanes in the first round. We were a wild card team, so, I mean, beating them in seven was pretty good. Ended up losing to the New York Islanders in six in the second round. They end up going to the Stanley Cup Finals, but losing to the Edmonton Oilers in seven. So Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl finally get that first Stanley Cup with the Edmonton Oilers. So for playoff scoring, David Pasternak just continued his excellence in the postseason with 17 points in 13 games. Marshawn at 16 and 13. DeBrusque had a point per game with 13 and 13. Just going to scroll through the rest. We had some pretty solid point production in the playoffs as well. Guys at the bottom, Grizzlick, Forbort, Boquist, Carlo. Boquist is probably a guy I'd expect a little bit more from, but he wasn't really able to produce much on the team this year. I mean, Jeremy Swayman, though, didn't have a great playoffs. Finished with an 899, 6-5-1. Allmark looks like he never got much action and only letting a goal on four shots. We so had a 750 save percentage. So taking a look at the entire league, wonder if Stuart Skinner ended up getting 16 wins, and he did. 908 save percentage. Elias Sorokin, though, probably would have been looking at playoff MVP if the Islanders ended up winning 920 save percentage for him, which is super solid. And Leon Dreisaitl, he's definitely getting the consummate. 47 points in 28 games. He had 12 more than Connor McDavid. That's insane. Even Evander Kane had a little bit more than McDavid. So huge playoff from Leon Dreisaitl. So taking a look at the final league awards, the Edmonton Oilers end up winning the Cup. The President's Trophy goes to the Florida Panthers. The Clarence Campbell Bowl goes to the Edmonton Oilers. The Prince of Wales goes to the New York Islanders. Individual awards, Pasternak wins the Art Ross. The Hart goes to Adam Fox. So does the Norris. The Lady Bing also goes to Adam Fox. The Calder goes to Brennan Offman. The Con Smythe goes to Leon Dreisaitl. The Vesna goes to Spencer Knight. The William M. Jennings goes to Ilya Samsonov. The Bill Masterson goes to Brendan Carlo. The Jack Adams goes to Craig Berube in St. Louis. The Selkie goes to Anze Kopitar. The Ted Lindsay goes to Adam Fox. And the Maurice Richard goes to Austin Matthews. Thank you very much for watching this video of if the Boston Bruins could make the playoffs without Patrice Bergeron. It seems like an EA simulation. They're able to do it. They had a huge season from David Posternak and Brad Marchand. Something I think they're going to need in real life to be able to get into the playoffs next season. Patrice Bergeron's obviously a legend. Heck of a career. Wish him the best in retirement. Thank you very much again for watching this video. If you haven't had the chance to check out any of my other content, please go back and do so. You can like, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any future uploads.